Now, let us look at the packages. Packages are nothing but directories in our file system. They exist as directories in our file system. They contain set of related class files. For example, the inbuilt packages in the JDK look like this. You have a Java package as a main package. It consists of a package called, for example, IO. This package consists of related class files to the input output. Like, for example, input stream, output stream, print stream, etc. Similarly, you have RMI package, which consists of its related classes. You have the SQL package, which has classes related to the database. You have the Lang package, which consists of, for example, the system class, the object class, class class. And under Lang, as we have discussed, we have a reflect package which consists of method class, constructor, field, etc. For example, you have the AWT package, which consists of component class, container, button, text field, etc. You have the applet package, which consists of the applet class, applet context interface, so on and so forth. Under AWT, we have event package, which consists of event set of classes. Like this, there are several packages and their classes existing in the JDK kit. So this is a broad overview of how the packages are and the classes are located in the packages. If you look at a class hierarchy, you have an object class from which you derive an input stream class. or let's say a component class. From component, container is derived. From container, panel is derived. From there, applet is derived. For example, you have class class derived from here. You have the string class derived from here. So this is an example of your class hierarchy. What I'm trying to show you out here is you can have classes which are parent to other classes coming from different packages. Here, object class comes from blank package, component comes from AWT package, container also comes from AWT, panel also comes from AWT, whereas applet comes from the applet package. So you can have classes coming from different packages and be derived from each other. How to create our own packages? We would like to create classes. And we would like to create these classes in packages. The Hello World program, for example, that we have written, we did not mention the package statement. So the class does not belong to any such package. It's a default package. So if you want to place classes in a package, how do you specify so? You write a packet statement. Let's call it as P1. Let's write a class here. 
A in package P1. Let us have a constructor for this class which just says system dot out dot println of A. SOP stands for system dot out dot println in short. Let us have a display method public void disp a. Here also we will have one SOP which just says disp a. This is a very simple class we are writing in package p1. Let us also have some more classes. We will have one more class in package p1 called class b. We will have a constructor for this which also does SOP of b and public void disp b Let's say we want to have a sub package for P1 called P11 and in this sub package we want to have class C which again has a constructor. And we'll write the this method here as well. Let's assume that we have one more package P2 which has class D which also has a constructor and a disk method. Now we have these four classes. How do we make use of these classes? We need to write a class which creates an instance of these classes and then invoke the appropriate methods. Now if I should be able to invoke and be able to create an instance of this class which is going to be outside the package, the scope of the members should also be available outside the package. So let's look at how we have written this class. This class does not have any access specifier given. So it is the default scope. What does the package of the default scope specify? It says you can access this class only within the package. So I will not be able to create an instance of this class or access this rather I would not be able to access this class outside this package. So in order to be able to access it, make it public. So we need to define all these classes as public so that we can access them outside their pa package. Now we can access the class outside the package but we cannot create an instance of the class outside the package because the constructor does not have an access specifier therefore it is a default which means I can only create an instance of these classes within the package by some other classes. 
So in order to be able to create an instance outside the package, I would need to give a public scope for the constructors as well. Now that we are ready to be able to access these classes and their members, let us write a code which is going to make use of these classes. Now let's say I have a class called packtest. And this class is going to make use of the other classes. So a, a1 is equal to new a. Of course, where do we need to write these? In a main function, public static void main of string array. b, b1 is equal to new b. c, c1 is equal to new c and d d1 is equal to new d. Once you have created the instances, you can actually access the members, right? So we call the disp a. Disp b. Disp c. disp d. So you're done accessing the classes which are in different packages. But then when you compile this code, how does the compiler supposed to know where to find these class files? Anytime a class is in a package, you need to specify the package in which the class is available. So you need to do an import. So import p1 dot a, that's where class a is available, import p2 dot d, import p1 dot b, import p1 dot p11 dot c. Also note when you are doing an import, when you say star, import package name dot star, although we have an access with this by specifying the star, we have an access to all the classes in that particular package. When I compile my code, only those classes which I am having in my class, which I am referring in my class, only those classes will be compiled and loaded at runtime. So we do not get all the classes into our JVM unnecessarily. How does this happen? Because at compilation time, although we have an import statement, those import statements are removed by giving a complete path to those classes which we are using from the specified packages. It is a good standard of coding to specifically import each of the classes likewise rather than saying star. When you do an import also, again, when you do an import dot star, that star means only the classes under the specified package, not its subclasses. Import is non-recursive. So if you want its sub-package classes, again you have to explicitly do an import for the sub-package classes. So now that you have imported, now you can again compile the file. Now just before compiling this file, let's go ahead and compile the files which belong to packages. Now how are we supposed to compile them? Again you use Java C, but there's a slight difference when classes belong to a package. 
when classes belong to a package you need to compile the classes with the minus d option so you need to say java c minus d path and the java file that is in order to compile class a let us first assume the structure how we want to place all the contents let's assume we have c drive root under which we have work directory let's say we have a test directory let's assume that under work directory and we also have let's say java source directory under java source directory we have all the java files that we have written under work directory you would like to create p1 package directory remember packages are nothing but directories in our file system and packages consists of related class files so p1 has to be a directory if it is a package in our file system so p1 directory under that we will have a dot class and b dot class we also have a sub package p11 which is having c dot class then let's assume under test we want to have p2 package with d dot class if this is the structure that we want to follow let's see how to compile them let's assume that we are currently under java source directory so from there if i have to issue the command to compile these classes into the appropriate directory structure here then we have to say java c minus d path where to specify uh, where to place the package directory and its class file so whenever classes belong to a package you must always use the minus d path even if we are going to store the uh, package directory under the current directory so java c minus d in order to compile a dot java file a dot java belongs to package p1 which comes under work directory the path that you need to specify is to the parent directory where the package directory should exist so since p1 should exist under work directory we need to specify the path to the work directory followed by a dot java file so now what happens is the java c command it checks whether under work directory there already exists a p1 directory so you might have created a p1 directory yourself manually so java c will check whether p1 directory already exists under the path specified if so it just compiles the a dot java file into a a dot class file and puts it under p1 if the p1 directory does not exist under work directory then p1 directory is created then a dot class is compiled and placed under p1 similarly you need to compile the other files java c minus d c colon work directory b dot java in this case the p1 directory is already created so it just compiles b dot java puts it under p1 now you want to compile c dot java file now c belongs to p1 dot p11 p11 is a sub directory of p1 now what would you specify here see if you were to specify here as c colon slash work directory slash p1 because it's under p1 we need to have p11 and under that c what happens here is if you say like this now your 
C, C dot Java says package P1 dot P11 and while compiling you are giving up till P1. So what it does is it goes to P1, work directory P1, it checks whether P1 exists under that and under that P11 exists. So what you need to do is you need to specify the path only up till work directory. So now under work directory checks the compiler checks whether P1 directory is there it is already there. Under P1 it checks whether P11 is there. If it is not there it will create one. Otherwise it will just compile c.java and put it under P11. Now that is compiled. Let us look at d.java. d.java belongs to a package P2 and P2 should exist under test. So you are going to specify test directory here with d.java. So you got all the classes in the appropriate directories. Now you are ready to compile this particular code. Now if you were to say Java C packtest.java you get an error. Why do you get an error? Because the compiler will look for p1.a.p2.d, p1.b and p1.p11.c. Now how does it know where to go find? To find a class file, the class path variable should be set with the path where the class files can be found. But we have not set that yet. So this command will end up giving you an error. So what you need to do is before compiling packtest set the class path where these classes can be found. So let us first set the class path. Say set class path is equal to. Now when you are setting a class path for classes which belong to a package you need to specify a class path up till the parent directory of the package directory not for that of a class because now these belong to a package. So set class path is equal to c colon slash work directory because you have a package directory under work directory also c colon slash test plus you might want to set class path uh, plus you might want to retain the class path which was already existing so percent class path percent then compile the code it compiles and puts packtest.class under java source Now to run this program you just have to mention java packtest if by chance you get an error here your class path is not set to find the packtest.class in that case make sure you have set the class path to the current directory as well. Now let us add on one more portion to this. Let us place this packtest itself in a package as well. So in that case you will say package, let us call it as pack. Now before executing this program, because now this packtest belongs to a package, you need to compile this program as well with the minus d option. Let us assume that we want to place packtest.class not under java source rather the package called pack not under java source rather under c drive itself which will contain your packtest.class. So you need to specify minus d c colon slash then 
pactest.java this checks whether under c drive pack directory already exists if not it creates the pack directory compiles the pack test code puts it under the pack directory now you need to run your pack test but to run your pack test by saying java pack test you need to tell the jvm where pack test is available pack dot pack test is available so again you have to set the class path so after compilation set class path again to c colon slash because it's in the root directory where we have the package file package directory plus you want to carry on whatever class path that you had previously set so you need to again say semicolon percent class path percent once you set the class path now you can run this program how do you run a program you say java and the file which contains the main function but then this file which contains the main function itself is belonging to a package now there is no import statement that you can specify at the command prompt to say under which package the class file is available right how do you specify any or how do you refer to any file which belongs to a package it's always the package name dot the class name so that's what you need to refer out here at the command prompt you need to give a complete path for the class so you're going to say java pack dot pack test so it's the package name dot the class name note that at any point whenever we we were uh, running our code java code the class file we would never give an extension to the class file we would never say pack test dot class or hello world dot class why did it, why is it that we never gave the extension because if we did it would treat it as a package name dot the class name rather than just a first name dot the secondary name of a file so this is how you create packages and classes under the packages now moving on little more further when you create your applications you will not give it in a exploded format like this all the class files you will not provide with the directories rather what you will do is you will create a what is known as a jar file and this jar file is what is deployed on the machines are placed on the machines where you want to execute these applications jar files are like your zip files or the tar files wherein you put together all the classes involved in your application bundle it together and put it across so in order to jar all these files you would use a command called jar jar is a java archive java jar stands for java archive jar command has options cvf create verbose file verbose is a optional option to specify c for create since you are creating a jar file you specify c and f for the jar file name so after specifying the option specify the jar file name let's call it as test dot jar and into this jar file you specify what are all the files that you want to place you can write any file sorry you can put any file into the jar file so you specify all the files that you want to place into a jar file followed by the jar file name so test dot jar space all the list of files so in this case you want to place the contents of p1 as well as p2 the entire content so c 
colon slash work directory and then c colon slash test all this content all the sub contents of work directory and all the sub contents of test you would want to place into a jar file this gives you along with the structure in the jar file just like the zip so it compresses and puts all the contents of the work directory and the test directory along with its complete path into a jar file once this is done now we are assuming that we have the test dot jar file here in java source we would need to set the class path now we don't we no longer specify the class path to the directory where the package directories are existing now we need to specify where the classes are residing the packages and their classes are residing in the jar file so you need to specify the class path to the jar file itself so you say c colon slash java source slash test dot jar then compile your pack test set the class path and execute so when you have your packages and their classes in a exploded format you set the class path to the parent directory of the package directory if you have jarred all your contents then you specify the class path to the jar file itself now the question that you might ask is i was using classes coming from lang package or whatever other packages but i never set the path for those packages a class path for those packages so how was it working now there is something called as a rt dot jar stands for runtime dot jar which is in your jre lib directory of jdk path this rt dot jar is already in the class path of the environment so that's why we never set the class path for rt dot jar explicitly for creating a jar file you can also specify a zero as a option when you specify the zero option it does not compress the contents it just places the contents into the jar file remember you can place any type of file into a jar file it's just a space separated list of contents to be placed we can extract the contents of a jar file by using the xvf command or just the xf command followed by the jar file name it will extract the contents into the current directory with all the package structure or the directory structures if you want to find out the contents of a jar file then you specify jar minus tf followed by the jar file name t stands for table so it lists the contents of the jar file so this is how you create packages jar them together and make use of it